Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode from the Hermitcraft server. I know it's been a little while. I have been super, super sick <laughs> over the last couple weeks, and I think I'm finally getting over whatever it was. Oh man, it, it's been honestly a pretty miserable couple of weeks. I have felt like death. Um, but I finally don't feel like I got hit by a bus. And I think I'm feeling a bit better, so we're back. And I, it has come to my attention that in my absence, apparently, we have be become fab... Five blocks of diamond? We have apparently become fabulously wealthy? There doesn't seem to be any glass taken from here. Did it just... Was it all the stained glass taken? Okay. I mean, Jevin... Okay, there was a bunch of diamonds. That's light gray stained glass. Two for gray. Another... And a few more. Okay, so look at that. We've got... Uh, how many How many diamonds is that? Almost two stacks of diamonds from the glass shop. I don't know why there were five diamond blocks in here. I think Jevin had said he went around and left the like spent diamond blocks but i thought that meant he actually like spent them not that he just left them in places unless maybe he like took all of these and stuff because i think i've done a pretty good job of keeping this stuff well stocked either way whatever it's fine um i'll take the glass but we need to restock this stuff we're gonna need almost a full shulker box there so that's like one Probably two. Looks like probably three, four shulker boxes worth of glass. Should be enough, I think. And then that should leave us a little bit of a surplus as well. That'll also allow us to test out our new super smelter and put that actually into action for the first time. So we said that was what? Four shulker boxes of glass? So that means I need four shulker boxes of sand. And I think in order to power this stuff, I think what we're gonna do is grab a whole lot of this. It's two stacks for a diamond, and there's a lot of kelp here. So, could we afford six shulker boxes of this stuff? Is that a thing that we can do? <laughs> um, let's find out. So let's see. If we leave 27 diamonds, that would be four shulker boxes, right? Because technically that would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then it would just be... Something like that. That would buy us six shulker boxes of dried kelp. I think we're going to do that, honestly. Like, that's a lot of dried kelp, but that's also a lot of fuel that I no longer have to purchase. And or mine for myself. So we can do something like that. And then we'll do... Another one. I'm basically going to buy him out. <laughs> I'm basically going to buy Exuma out of kelp right now. If he has enough. And I don't know that he will. I guess we'll find out. So, there we go. And then... There's another full bunch of shulker boxes. Oh, this is so much kelp. And so much fuel, though. This is going to last, like, super, super long. If you think about it, because each of these is essentially enough. So let's just do that. And then a 13. And then a 14. And then a 13. And then we'll take all of this stuff right here. There's another one. And finally, it, does he actually have enough kelp? He totally does. Barely. 
He barely has enough kelp, but he does have enough. So we have just purchased six full shulker boxes of dried kelp blocks to power our furnaces. I just heard rockets as well. And I have no idea who's actually it right now. So if it's Scar, I may be in trouble. I definitely heard rockets. I'm going to assume it's not Scar. Anyway, so I'm going to head off and gather uh, about four shulker boxes of sand so we can restock that thing. Also, this is a new boat. This looks lovely. Um, we're going to head off and I'm going to go to the desert, mine out about four shulker boxes of sand, and then we'll head over to the furnace and start smelting them up. Alright guys, I am back. I was AFK for maybe about 10 minutes. Well, I mean, after I got done gathering all the sand and bringing all that stuff back here. Spent about 10 minutes off AFK. Completely done. It's fantastic. I love this thing. <laughs> and I only used two thirds of the capacity, or I only used a third of the total smelting capacity of this thing. So yeah, this is, this is fantastic. It's plenty fast, um, and this should totally work for us from a um, smelting, a large smelting job perspective. I mean, previously, it just took so long to smelt huge quantities of glass, like hours, uh, because they're just it, like my little tiny 16 furnace super smelter just wasn't cutting it. So this is good, and it's also fairly fuel efficient, which is also good. I think uh, with the way the sales in the glass shop are going, I could probably afford to just basically run this thing off of uh, Exuma's kelp. So that should be good. And now we have our glass that I can bring back with me to the glass shop and get that thing going. I do want to do some decorating. I, I want to kind of decorate the outside of this a bit. Uh, what we'll probably do is, let's see, how much space is right here? Not a lot. We'll probably turn this into like a factory looking building eventually. Um, and we'll definitely want some sort of like maintenance access. Maybe we'll put like a door right here and then one over here as well, just to kind of, and then maybe one on the other side, just so it's like sort of semi-symmetrical. Or over here, we also have room for a whole bunch of, of uh, chests and stuff. So we could store you know, whatever. Um, I do want to answer a couple of questions, though, about this smelting thing, because there's been a lot of people who have said, like, hey, what's going, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why is that? The big one was, why is there no single input? And the big reason is because there's not really a good way to do it fast enough, consistent enough, that doesn't involve a lot of really complicated redstone timings and, and things like that. The problem is essentially that hoppers are not fast enough. Yeah, you could have one input for a single chest, uh, for a single double chest of stuff, and you could start carrying that into hopper lines, but you'd spend so long just waiting. I mean, it, this is the fastest way to do it. I did think about that for a while and try to, I, I tried to come up with a way that worked for me that, um, that would have allowed you to have one input, but I, after a lot of thinking about it, I was like, nah, you know what? It's just not really worth it. Cause we're talking, I want to be able to dump double chests upon double chests of items into this thing at once. Um, and it's just, yeah, uh, it just wasn't really worth it. So that was the big thing. Um, and then, I mean, obviously there's faster, there's better ways to do the redstone spacing and things like that. But, uh, make it, or, you know, you could make this a little bit more compact in a few different ways. But I think this is, this works. I wanted to make something that was tileable. So you could technically make this furnace as large as you want if it's as big, uh, if it's uh, something you want to do. You can make this thing even even larger if you want to. Uh, and then finally, the last thing that a lot of people commented on last time was that there were a lot of hoppers that were facing down and that were misplaced. I fixed them all. I, I fixed them all off camera. I did notice that and I was like, oh, uh, what it is is that when you place a hopper... Say you have a hopper like right here. When you click on the grass, it has it placing down. Whereas if you're pointing here and you shift click normally, you'd expect it to place into the hopper. So in order to fix that, if you have grass like right here and you want this hopper facing in, you have to make sure the hitbox 
is up here. So it faces the right way. So that's how you ended. That's how I ended up with so many hoppers that were facing down into the ground and were messed up uh, because the grass was messing things up. And I didn't know that hoppers behaved in that way. But anyway, I think we're good. I've got enough glass now to take back to the shopping district and uh, smelt up and put, restock the glass shop. And there's some other stuff I want to do over there as well. So I'm going to uh, get all the necessary glass dyed and blah, blah, blah. And then I will meet you over in the shopping district. All right, guys, I am back. I have just finished restocking the glass shop. So the glass shop is now completely and totally stocked. It is, it's full. Um, every single chest, every single color, it's all good. Now, I've heard that Jevin has opened up a diamond giveaway over here. <laughs> ah, that's my head on a pike. Well, that's morbid. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, welcome to Diamond Diggers. There's a payment chest here, instructions here, right? For one diamond, you can harvest up to six pumpin pumpkins. Randomly placed in the patch, there are nine diamond blocks. If you harvest a pumpkin, please replant in the same spot. If you do find diamonds, please mark it down in this log on the next page. Example, Jevin, one block. Here's the thing, right? So there are nine diamond blocks in the chest, or in in this field. There are nine diamonds in a diamond block. It costs one diamond to play, and with that one diamond, you can harvest a grand total, I accidentally, um, touched that, but if, for, for one diamond, you can harvest six pumpkins. So, essentially, it comes down to how many pumpkins are in this patch? Because if there are nine diamond blocks, that's 81 diamonds. I think I can just harvest this entire pumpkin patch for far less than the amount of diamonds. There is a, f a fatal flaw in your business plan, Jevin. You're not supposed to say how many diamond blocks are in the pumpkin patch, because now I know the math checks out. Let, I, let's, let's, let, I'm gonna count the pumpkins here real quick. One, two, three, four, five, 56, 57, 58, 59. So there are 59 pumpkins, I think. I may have, um, I may have messed up and accidentally counted a jack-o'-lantern, but it's roughly, it's less than a stack of pumpkins, essentially, is how many pumpkins are in here. So, here is the plan. We're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so we'll just, oh, wow. Wow, that's really good. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And some of these you can see underneath. So you can see if the diamond block is there. So we're at four, five. You can be super strategic about this. Six. All right, so we actually got two diamond blocks there for one diamond. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take this out. We're gonna go one. Okay, so I have found one diamond block. And then we'll say... Uh, now I gotta figure out where they all were. There was one here, here, here. Oh, that's gonna be hard to place back in the same spot. Um, there, and here. Okay, and we have covered everything up to this line. Because as I said, some of these you can see underneath, like there's no point in getting this pumpkin right here, because you can see underneath. You know there's no diamond. You know there's no diamond under these, the pathway. You can be very into, you can be smart about this, right? So, and we go one. One. No, no. 
two. Oh, nailed it. Three. None of those. Four. Oh, man. We're killing it. We are killing it right now. I think that's all of the... I mean, I was originally thinking I would have to mine all of them. But it'll be even cheaper. So we're at four... Five, six. Oh, look at that. We're finding two diamonds per thing. This is the easiest game of my life. So there's one. Uh, we need to pop over. There was one right here. I don't think I'm going to be able to replace this one. Unless we do that. There we go. And then we can go here. 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 Did I mine this one? I guess I did. I guess I didn't see the, the one behind it. But there we go. We're up to four diamond blocks. And that was only one more play. So we toss that in there. And then finally, we get... Uh, I think we can probably do this with like six more. Because let's see. We just... Uh, we, we got this one. Uh, this one, I think we checked. That could be one. It is. So that's one. None of those. None of these. None of these. We're still only at one over here. Now, you know what? I'm just going to take that one and we'll put it back. So we're at one. Two. Three, four, five, six. Okay, there we go. So that was six. We get rid of this. And then we put those back. I'm missing one. Maybe the grass grew already. I think there was one here and the grass had already grown. That doesn't look right though. You know what? There wasn't one underneath this anyway, so I'll just put it right there. Okay, so that's six. So then, oh, oh, that's right. We uncovered a diamond block here. So I must have misplaced. Yeah, 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 that's right. Because we, we yanked one from over here, and this was like the very first one we found of that batch. So let's take that back. There we go. That's seven. <laughs> We're at seven diamond blocks for three diamonds. <laughs> We've got the strategy nailed down. We're just getting free diamonds here. This is incredible. Uh, so then we can do like one more. So we'll say one. Two, three. Four. Five, six. Okay, there we go. So that was six. And then I think... Are there more pumpkins up here at all? No? I mean, there's one more pumpkin hiding somewhere that has a diamond block in it. But I'm not sure what we've missed. It's probably over here. It's probably like one of these that I missed. But you know what? I'm just going to call it good right there. We'll leave one diamond block in the field <laughs> for other hermits to find. Um, because I'm not sure which which pumpkin I missed that could potentially have actually been uh, another diamond block. But we just got eight diamonds for the price of four diamonds. Talk about uh, the, the world's worst business model. <laughs> We need to put our name in the book. So we will say, Wells, eight blocks. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait. Instructions go here. There we go. So there's the instructions. Here's the payment chest. Four diamonds. <laughs> oh, Jevin. Ah, that's, uh, you know, and it's not even cheating. I followed the rules exactly. Six pumpkins 
per diamond. Uh, and you can see, as soon as we found that first one, and we knew how they were hidden, it was the easiest mini game in the world. I'll take it. <laughs> ah, thanks for the diamonds, Jev. The last thing I want to do before today's episode is I want to go and look at something. Exuma announced in our uh, our Discord chat that uh, essentially October is going to be a special month. Uh, and it, this is something we kind of decided. So October is going to be phantom hunting season. And on the scoreboard, you can now see how many phantoms we have killed starting, I don't know if that's season long. I feel like I've killed a phantom at some point over the course of this season. But either way, um, I am currently at a score of zero phantoms. Now, with that said, there is a bounty for whoever kills the most. And he said in the message, I have built a platform for the game in the new spooky area. And apparently the path starts at negative 158, or no, 158, negative 113. So that's going to be this way. 158. Okay, that actually is broad. It says it's signposted. Ah, path leads to spooky biome. Okay, here we go. So this is where we need to go. And 158 would be down here, basically at the end of this hallway, I think. Like, right about here. Spooky biome swamp this way. Okay, cool. So I want to check this out. Um, apparently it's going to be this whole area. Um, I believe this is actually going to be like a project that we all kind of join in on. Ooh, that's... Okay, this is a little scary. <laughs> this is a little bit scary. Uh, and there's a portal right there. So I think we'll be okay. Can I? Yep, there we go. Nether sheep. Uh, <laughs> so let's go check this out. I want to see uh, kind of what's going on here. Oh, oh, what is, what is? Is this? Oh, I see. You take this. These are steps leading out. Okay, gotcha. I thought that was like some sort of a detail. Oh, is this a skull? Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's a pretty fantastic. Uh, it's a double sided skull. That's a pretty fantastic little uh, nether portal design. And then over here, there is a platform for phantom killing. This is for the phantom killing mini game. For the month of October, phantom hunting season is declared. The hermit who kills the most phantoms wins the contents of this chest. As time passes, the chest will fill with goodies. So it starts out with the nether star, which is honestly a pretty good prize. Those are annoying to get. Um, and then I, I think this whole biome, I think we're planning on transforming this into like a spooky Halloween uh, district, essentially like a, a, a haunted district. I think it's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to doing some building here and stuff like that. Um, but for now, there's just the phantom challenge. That's about all that's here right now. Well, that and the um, the skull. So yeah, I think it's all good. And we'll plan to do some work over here in the future. We also have a lot of other stuff to do. I have some uh, work that I want to do on a nether hub. I have uh, the factory for the furnaces and stuff. Like, it's all good. So... I'm glad to be back. I'm glad I'm feeling better. <laughs> but I am out of time for this episode. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.